cool. Check, check, check. We good? Check, check, check. We good. All right. We back. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you in advance for staying. I'm Alice Black. I'm Courtney, better known as Kurt Cobain. And this is the Cool in Real Life podcast where passions and purpose align. Word. How are you, friend? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Good. We're going to get right into it. Word. What's your life like? I got to go first. <laughs> Who went first last time? Uh, I think I went first last time. Dang, I gotta go first. All right, I'll go first. Um, yeah, you gotta go first. Wait. Mm. What? I think I went first last time. Yeah, you go. You go ahead. Um, my life, my life has been golden, man. That's great. My life is great. Like I am in a great place. I'm in a great place. I feel like each month it just gets progressively better. And I think it's just because of like extreme mindfulness. Like I just have extreme mindfulness right now. And when I find myself like getting down about anything or even feeling up about anything, I process it. Mm. And I try to find the lessons in everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did take notes because a month is is long. You know, my month... Yeah. It be moving. Right. Um, so I'm going to go through my notes real quick okay. on what my life is like. Cool. Um, so the first one is extreme thankfulness that brings me to tears. Wow. Yeah. So I was just pondering on how thankful I am mm. of, of my life. You know what I mean? Like just where I am and how far I've I've come. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I literally cried about it. Wow. That's how thankful I am. Mm. Um, so that's one. Okay. Um, being a blessing for others. So I had this experience with Instacart. So it was when the longshoremen was doing that strike and people was just like, my mom, my dukes called and was like, you need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get your, get your stuff in order. Yes. You feel me? (laughs) Even though what I get is domestic, it's not even international. Right. So it wouldn't have been impacted, but um, I ordered a bunch of water and I didn't feel like going to the grocery store to get it because I get like big cases of it. So I just wanted to have it delivered to the house. So I did an Instacart and the way that my Instacart is set up is like deliver it to my actual door, to the condo door. Mm. You know what I mean? So okay. come to the actual floor that I live on, deliver it to my door. That's how people read it. Yeah. I normally go down with my wagon to go get my waters, but I forgot that I had it set to that. So this black woman literally brought up three heavy cases of water upstairs and left them in front of the door. Actually four cases. It was four cases. Yeah. And she, I have my phone on, um, silence unknown callers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wasn't getting the messages. So when I finally saw it, I'm like, I feel so bad. She was like, I, I, contacted her i'm like i feel so bad i'm sorry like she needed like directions to get into the building oh honey but she got in mm-hmm. and um she was like just leave me a little bit of tip like nothing crazy like you know it was a lot i'm like don't worry about it i got you on the tip so i tipped her m- way more than she thought that i ever would yeah i tipped her a lot i ain't mm-hmm. gonna hold you i'm not gonna say the amount but it was it was a lot mm-hmm. um and she cried about it and she messaged me and I didn't know, you know, like when you have food delivered and stuff like that, it kind of like it cuts off after the the delivery is done. But for hers, like for Instacart, you can still talk because just in case like groceries are messed up or whatever. And she was just like, I pray for I prayed to God to like help me out. Like, I know she was like, I, I prayed. This was my prayer that God would help me. I got three kids. It's just me. And I was like, wow, like something told me to give that exact amount. And it was a lot. Mm. I'm not, y'all, it was a lot. And something just told me to do it. And I just followed it. And I I was obedient to the voice. And she was like, I needed that so much. You have no idea how much you've blessed me. Wow. And um, I was just like, I just pray that whatever you're working on in your life, that it comes to fruition i just i pray that everything that you are praying for occurs for you Mm. you know what i mean and um it was just a really good experience 
That's beautiful. Yeah, man. So just being a blessing for others. Yeah. Um, thinking outside of myself and continuing to be obedient to the voice that I hear. Mm. Um, I was telling you today when I was like, can I pet that dog? <laughs> <laughs> now, a dog. <laughs> it was a real dog. It was a real dog, a corgi. Yeah. I had never pet a corgi before, mm. but they so cute and they got little fat butts. Yes. And I love them. They so cute. And they got big paws. Yes. And um, I was like, can I pet that dog? And I was just telling you like how like whenever I feel anything, I get that voice. It's just like, I'm going to engage on it. Mm. And it was just a good interaction between strangers today. Yeah. Over petting a dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like I tend to always like end up on the right side when I'm obedient. So yeah, man. So that's messaging that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. So that's number two. Um, number three, still didn't do the detox. I was supposed to be detoxing. <laughs> this John say detox. Ain't do no detox. <laughs> ain't do no detox. I was supposed to detox when I got back from Chicago. Okay. But just work. I just been busy, man. You have. I've been busy. You know what I mean? And um, I just haven't had a chance to do it. But just being mindful of what I ingest, what I bring into my system, um, had a really great conversation between coworkers about health and wellness and diet. And I always notice, like, when I tell people that I'm plant-based, their first thing is like, well, what do you eat? Like, people don't know that there's food beyond meat and dairy. I'm just like, right. <laughs> food. Yeah. Good food. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, I really want to detox. And I, I realized also after talking to a friend that, um, not that I realized this, but it was a conversation that I had that detoxing is very spiritual. So when you detox, you really just have to be in alignment. You have to be in a certain space before you do it. And, you know, you just have to be in a space of um, stillness, I want to say. Yeah. Being cognizant of, of what your requests are, what your prayers are. Um, a lot of things fall out of alignment. A lot of things fall into alignment during your detox. So um, I just want to be in a more still state before I do that. Mm. Um, because the last time I detoxed, my whole world got turned upside upside down. And it was kind of like when I started my journey of being, you know, going plant-based. Mm, okay. And yeah. I wasn't mindful that fasting is very spiritual. Mm-hmm. Detoxing is very spiritual. So um, this time around, I just want to be in deep prayer deep thought manifestations and spirituality word yeah so that's number three number four feeling my ancestors stronger than ever so i had you know an experience with trying to get the the last episode up i was super tired i didn't set an alarm i was working 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 nonstop, and soon off of coming off of work I had to edit the audio for last month's podcast episode and I fell asleep on the couch. Like I crashed and I literally, my ancestors came to me, woke me the hell up. (laughs) So, and I realized that from the response that we received last month, um, it definitely was an episode that needed to come out. You know what I mean? Um, our loved ones and guides on the other side, they know more than we do. And, I remember feeling my ancestors' presence and it automatically was like this understanding of it's time to get to work. Mm. This needs to come out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man. Feeling my ancestors born to ever. That was one of my prayers and it's starting to come to light for me and right. I'm super appreciative of it. I know when I be telling you the the experiences that I be having, you be, you be shook. <laughs> but it's super peaceful, super calm. It's... I'm always met with with love mm-hmm. from the other side, and um, yeah, word. That's number four. Number five, duty of friendship. My homegirl said that to me. Duty of friendship. Wow. And it just stuck out to me. Yeah. Like, damn, we really do have a duty to each other as friends. Yeah, we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it made me sit with. It made me. I sat in that for a while. Like, damn. Like, am I? showing up correctly for mm-hmm. my friends yeah you know what i mean um just the duty of friendship and how important that is so that's been like a theme 
um, for my month, like duty of friendship, just showing up for people and just being an overall good friend. Right. Number six, building new connections with people who are good for my nervous system. Very important. Very important. Yeah. You pointed that out um, in a conversation that we had, and it just feels really good to be in friendship and in relationship with people who are really good for my nervous system. Mm. I think that for the longest, I thought that I was like this super toxic person. And I remember in therapy, my therapist was just like, once you change your environment and you change the people that you're around, you're going to align with people who would never even think to do the things that you're experiencing. Wow. And then that's where the healing is at. Mm. And I realized that like, being in alignment with a bunch of people that are really good for my nervous system, the way that I used to engage and the way that I used to view the world and just react to things are, it's just not the same. Yeah. And it's because I could, I could really breathe. Mm. Like I can emotionally breathe, mentally breathe, spiritually breathe. Like I can really breathe. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm not, um, I feel like I'm not treading for my life. I'm not in these like super, um choppy waters like i'm able to float and everything is more serene and the waters are clear and you know what i mean yeah so that's where i'm at right now so yeah man right. and the seventh thing is chicago so on last month i talked about going to chicago Did. this time around i gotta talk about what chicago was like i had a great time yes i had a great time yes Every single day got better. Oh my gosh, yes. And the K Tronada show was fire. Yeah. Fire, man. They put on a great show, man. So Chicago, I was talking to you about this with Chaz yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what did homie say? He's like, it's something out of a movie. Yes. It really is. Yeah. Was it Chaz that we were talking? It was talking? Chaz, yeah. It's something out of a movie. The buildings don't stop. Like their crazy. downtown their is architecture vast, is crazy, 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 and it's it was odd because when I was out there, I was thinking like, damn, like if Dallas was actually a dope city, it would look more like Chicago mm. if they cared about architecture down south. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you would think, but it's it's still Midwest though. Yeah. So um, when they were asked, like the Uber drivers and things like that, they would ask me like, how does it feel to come out here? And I'm like. It's a dope city, mm -hmm. but it's still Midwest. Mm. Like you still get that Midwest feeling. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like it could be like a New York. Yeah. But it ain't. No. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's a little bit too clean. I ain't see no rats. Yeah. Facts. I ain't see not not near rat. I ain't see a rat. I only saw a couple pigeons. You gonna see them, but no rats. I ain't see no rats. Yeah. Or roaches. Nope. I ain't see no roaches. Nowhere. It's clean. It's a clean, it's a, overall, it's a clean city. Mm -hmm. Even in the hood. I ain't go to the hood. I was in the hood when I went. Yeah. But even in the hood, yeah. Word. Mm-hmm. Clean in the hood. Yeah. I need to go to the hood. Just mm, be careful. I'm going to the hood, man. But the, um, you know, the, the people are welcoming. Not <laughs> so much the, the hood. You know, they'll look at you because, you know, yeah. in a neighborhood. But, like, if you walk a couple blocks, you still... Like, I was in the Br Bronzeville area. Remember I was telling you that was historically yeah. black? Yeah. The OGs out there, it's, it's, it gives Southern how they greet you and, you know, different yeah. things like that. So, yeah. Which I think is dope, considering, like, we all migrated from the... Most of us arrived to the North from the Great Migration. Yeah. And I feel like people in Chicago kind of kept that Southern hospitality mm -hmm. versus, like, Jersey... Philly, like, you know, New York. Yeah. I feel like we kind of lost touch in that. And I think it's a generational thing, too, because he could tell that we weren't from there because we would greet him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we good morning, how are you? You know, speaking to the elders and Word. stuff like that. Oh, so y'all initiated it. Right. And they and they spoke back. Yeah, and then, they, and then it just flowed from there. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do kind of sound Southern, though. I be saying that. Like, y'all got a Southern draw. Like, y'all yeah. sound Southern. Yeah. But shout out Chicago. I had a great time. I'm going back out for my birthday. I can't wait for you. Yeah, man. I'm going to have a great time. You are. Another great time. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going back out to Chicago for my birthday. And yeah, I'm just, I realized last year I spent my birthday alone. 
in the crib. You know what I mean? I was going through some things. I, I f- like I can trend mm. like how I felt last year yeah. around my birthday to this year. It's like a complete difference. Mm. And when you in the thick of it, you don't think that you'll ever get out of it. Like you can't imagine or envision what it's like to be happy again or to even just be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you don't see the forest from the trees, but right now I'm like at, in an aerial view. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it. So Dude. I just want to spend my birthday with people that I know and love and people I have a great time with. Chicago's fun. So going back out there. Word. What about you? What's your life like? Let's see. Should I start with the pleasant things or not so pleasant? It's up to you. Let me start with the uh, not so pleasant so we can end off on a great note. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, I was not okay after releasing that episode. I ain't even. I ain't even talk. I ain't even. I was gonna go. I was gonna talk about that deeper into the episode. Mm-hmm. But go. But go ahead. Yeah, I. I was not okay. Um, I needed s- some real therapy sessions, like, or because, um, I don't know if I just didn't expect like a lot of people to watch it, or mm-hmm. you know, you know, whatever. It just came with like a lot of feelings, and so my therapist told me that, um, you know. My, I'm not used to speaking about how I really feel without worrying about what anybody else is going to think about it. So because of that, like my body was rejecting it. Cause one, I don't talk about my feelings Two, I certainly don't talk about them publicly, like private things like that. I don't do things like that. And the fact that I did was making me like literally nauseous, like physically sick in bed, can't get out all kinds of stuff. And she was like, your body is rejecting the fact that you just spoke your truth so it took some you know unpacking uh and working through that so I don't know uh, I know I shouldn't like you know worry about what what other people think and you know things like that but it definitely was on my mind but I worked through it got through that um just just seeing like even the comments people were making like especially on YouTube and stuff I had to ask a homegirl, I was like, did I, cause you know, I haven't watched it again. I was like, did I say the word narcissist? Like I was asking her, like, did I say that out my mouth? Because why is every comment saying this? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was crazy. It was, it was a crazy experience. It was very uncomfortable, you know, for me. Um, but I worked through it and we're pressing on. Or yeah. How do you feel now though, in this very moment about it? Do you still feel like extremely uncomfortable about it? I wouldn't say extremely, but I wouldn't say like that it's like, like it's not at the back of my mind, certain things. Yeah, Yeah, you know, it's just gonna take a while. This is new for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, So yeah, but we're moving on. Like, cause even with me feeling like that, I still understand the importance of saying what I have to say and still putting like those clips out, even though I'm uncomfortable. Cause it's, it's bigger than me at this point. And the work, you know what I mean? Is, is bigger than how I feel. Cause if it's up to me, I'm not going to do anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So same. There's that. Um, that was that. I remember I hit you up. I just want to say this. I remember I hit you up to just check in like, and I think we both were like, emotionally like I don't want to say distraught but just extremely uncomfortable yeah and I was physically sick too Mm -hmm. like I started to get I started getting migraines Mm -hmm. and it was it was a lot yeah it was like I think that we hadn't been that vulnerable on our podcast yet right you know what I mean even with the first leg of the grief series like right we opened up about some stuff and I just want to say before you move forward I just want to say that I'm extremely proud of us for doing that because like I told you I said once we give it to the world number one it no longer belongs to us but number two I really want you to get to a point where when you let it out and you give it to the world it kind of is like a weight off of you it's like it's not here anymore it's not it's not and that's what I said. I said, um, I said to somebody, I said, is keeping things to yourself really healing? 
like is that healing if you're keeping everything bottled in and keeping things to yourself and I think that like us going through like different painful experiences the fact that people can watch it listen to it and then reflect on themselves and find healing with within it I think that that's like amazing yeah but that's all I want to say proud yeah. of you dog Thank you, man. Um, you know, it was hard. And I think that eventually I will get to to that place. It's just that's not my natural reaction. That's why I continue to go to therapy because that's where I learned, like, the way that you're reacting isn't good. These are the steps and the tools that you could take to try to change that. It's just going to take some work. You know what I mean? Like, I, I unfortunately, I wasn't able to rest in um the comments and things like that that people were saying it wasn't until I received one um one of my young ones hit me up she's like 20 mm -hmm. um young Filipino girl in college and watched it and she sent me this long like long she said it was an essay and it was and when I read that because I think when she reflected on herself it wasn't necessarily so much romantic it was just relationships period um, and how people discard them and how that affected her. And just hearing like from her perspective, someone who's so young who watches us and could resonate with it and the wonderful things that she had to say about us, that one did like hit me in the field. Like I definitely had a little boohoo cry. So thank you for reaching out, um, you know, and and saying that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get there. I feel like, I feel like you had boohoo cries on all of them, Jones, for real. Whenever somebody reached out to you, I was very emotional. I was, it was yeah. so weird because it was like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm worried about what people are going to think. And I'm also like touched. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So it right. was, it was a, a weird time. Yeah. So, but yeah, we're, we're, we're pressing on. Pressing on. Uh, the next thing, um, I started working on a new project with some friends. Okay. So um, I don't know if I said it in detail here or not, but one of nah. my friends is coming out with a coffee table book of his works from like 2016 up until like maybe current or like 2021 something like that um so when we met up and he was showing me the drafts in between the drafts were like um words kind of like I don't know if you've ever read Basquiat's um biography but like along the pictures his family members have written you know memoir-esque things so that's how it was with my friend and just reading it it was so vivid and descriptive I was like we should like kind of bring this to life I'm always trying to bring something visually to life and he didn't think of it like that and so he was like well who do you think we should get to direct this so I was like Quincy so basically this time I'm assistant director I've never been assistant director before so um you know, it's a great experience learning things. That's why I got to go back on Monday. I was like, I can't stay because I got to go back to film. Yeah. That's what I got to go back to work. Um, to work on. So that's dope. That is dope. Um, you know, working with friends, just grateful that they listen, you know, take take my suggestions. It's like, you know what? You're right. Let's do it. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. I hope it comes out dope. I know it's going to come out dope. Yeah. Um, also, shout crazy. out Quincy, man. Yeah, shout out. He's everywhere. And I'm thankful for him for always saying yes. Um. Other than that, uh, I didn't do nothing. I cut my hair. It looks really good. Thank you. I like it. I haven't had short hair in years. Like hair that hasn't even touched my shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's very different. But I had a certain look that I wanted to go for this month. And I was like, I guess I think I have to cut my hair. How how does it feel to cut your hair? It feels, um, I'm going to cut it uh, some more when I get back. Um, but a little... I don't want to say liberating, but it's just something different. I haven't had short hair is just, you know, not my thing. So I think it looks nice. It looks it looks really nice. Thank you. Yeah, man. That's it. It's giving nineties. So I'm trying to go for. Word. Yeah. Looks nice. Thanks. I like it. Word. And that's it. Word. I like the hat. Showcase the side, yo. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Got the cool embroidered on that joint. Had to, okay. <laughs> nah, Put our name tough. on it so they know it's real. So they know it's real. Yeah. That's tough. Thank you. Word. That's it. That's what's up. Sounds like a good month. Sounds like a good month for you too. Yeah, man. Yeah. We moving on. We moving on. Cool. 
and we back, and we back, and we back with healthy drinks this time. I wouldn't say healthy. Well, but it's not alcohol. It's not alcohol. There's a coffee shop around the way. Rival bros. Is it is it as good as is it good? It's good, but it's not as good as Boone Curves. Boone Curves. Boone Curves. The homie ended up getting lemonade and put a shot of espresso in it. That's With some simple poppin'. syrup. With some, it ain't popping. Yes, it is. Not like Boone Curves. That's Boone different. Is, Boone Curves is popping too. I mean, she has the lime time. Like, who would have thought to put a shot of espresso in limeade? Not and me. I think they make their own limeade too. Yeah. I seen her mixing it, putting the simple syrup in it. Fire. It's just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. That John is all right. It ain't hitting the same. It's not hitting Cause the same. Because it's lemonade. But it's good though. Now that it's settled down, I think because when it was fresh and that that lemon was so um, pungent, yeah. Now that it's like set for a little bit, yeah, I like it even more. Than you know, I'm, I'm on my autumn vibe tip. I got a chai tea latte, mm. shot of espresso in that joint. Word, chilling. Yeah. So grief one hundred three. We ending this John on out. We ending it we on ending out, this y'all. John on out. We finally arrived. I know y'all keep asking, like, when y'all going to talk about something happy or when we going to... Who's saying you know, that? Some people are, are saying that. And Listen, it's like, look. Who's saying that? That's you got to understand that, especially this grief series, this is for us. I know that it might be heavy for y'all to digest, but we got to get this out. They got to get it out too. <laughs> Apparently, you know, like there's a lot of people who literally like are going through similar things and they would rather just suppress than to approach it head on. Yeah. And sorry, not sorry, man. This podcast is extremely vulnerable. Like I just want us to sit in the vulnerability and it's going to touch the people it's meant to touch. If it don't touch you, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to ever stop being vulnerable and talking about what I want to talk about. Yeah. For At the, the length for, that for we the need to talk about. For the sake of like, somebody not wanting to hear real and raw emotions, that's mm-hmm. not ever going to be me. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so Grief 103, Losing and Refinding Oneself. That's the title? I don't know if that's the title. That's what we got on these notes. Loss of self. Loss of self. Yeah. But also how we found ourselves at the end. Facts. Yeah. Well, let me start. <laughs> it's, my, it's my turn to go first. It is. You had to say it like I that. I did. Because <laughs> <laughs> last month knocked my head off, man. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go by the, um, you know, the line out that okay. I sent you. Okay. Losing ourselves. So what factors contributed to this, if any? So for me, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but definitely my previous relationship. I spoke about it at length last episode. If you didn't check it, go watch it because I'm not, I'm not even going to get into it again. But realizing that um, that relationship had a very negative effect on me, how I show up. Well, what's showing up, you know, in the world. And unfortunately, how I still do sometimes, but I'm working on correcting it. Mm. Um, and then also um, my mental health did slip, you know, as we know, but also my physical health greatly pay, played a part into um, how I was showing up, which isn't something I really talked about publicly either. So it's like, if you knew me and saw what I was going through, you knew, but, um, I used to have fibroids and endometriosis. So usually women like have either, or I had both and it greatly affected me. Um, I was almost always in pain, had horrible cycles, um, which would like leave me extremely weak throughout the months. Um, and you know, I couldn't like work out and things like that. It just impacted my life greatly. Everything 
um, like even trying to take showers. Sometimes I would like almost pass out in the showers. Wow. Trying to put clothes on, button my pants. Like I would lo- everything that I did almost like would just, it was exhausting to me. Um, but again, I don't think even the people who were living with me knew how much it affected me because I still got up and kept doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then because of that, uh, I almost died. Yeah, man. That <laughs> twice. Was, that was scary. The second time was the worst one, but I almost died twice. Um, yeah, that, and, and it, I remember you, I remember the first time, um, when I had to, to go to the hospital to get the transfusion and I would tell you like what my beep. PMs were. Mm-hmm. They were always over a hundred. I mean, like when you was like, we hospitalized, you know, you 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 shouldn't be this high. And I would measure my heart rate and it always would be like this is what it should be when you're resting, which is like 60, 70 something. I was never, I was almost never below a hundred, even when I'm sitting down chilling like this. So I was just in a in a bad state. And then my hemoglobin was extremely low. I remember you telling me like we usually admit people when it's this, you know, level. So the the second time it happened, the first time it happened, I went down to like a six, some, something like that. The second yeah. time I went down to like five, something. Yeah. That's low, but it ain't like you gonna die low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably um, felt like it though. Yeah, it got worse. Like, you know, mm. um, after that, because I, I kept, you know, losing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So I remember, like, I think I was by myself in the house, and I felt myself, like, about to pass out. <laughs> and it was like, I remember telling myself, like, you better not fall on your face, because you're too old to be snag tooth okay? <laughs> fall slow. <laughs> <laughs> you better fall slow. <laughs> So I did. You needed that damn panic button. Hell, <laughs> I'm falling I went and down I can't and get I up. I just went into like you know. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I never, I never said this. That's all crazy. It was crazy. Like I just went and I just stayed there until I could get a little bit of energy to like get back in the bed. Yeah. Um. So I don't mean to laugh. It's how you're. <laughs> it's how you. I'm trying to make it. you know make light of it. Yeah. So yeah. Um. You know, went and it was it was not good. Probably should have went to the hospital, but I didn't. And then I remember getting myself checked. I drove myself to urgent care because I just I was like something ain't right. And the lady like they went, they did the test. She busts back in the room. She's like, "We're sending you to the hospital now." Like called the ambulance, rushed me over there, and um, you know had to get a transfusion, and it didn't really work like I kept losing blood throughout the month so basically not to get too graphic but when my cycle came on in January it didn't stop until I had surgery in March wow yeah so I almost died for real like that's why I was like what? that's what my those were my initial numbers but it kept getting yeah, worse yeah. Yeah. and um I didn't have any more like by the time I had surgery they they couldn't get anything. They just had to go. Girl, I closed my eyes. I had to, I'm jumping around, but I ended up having to get a hysterectomy just because I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to make it. Like, That's crazy, man. <laughs> um, I never, I, my, my, my body just would stop, it wouldn't stop letting the blood go. And yeah, when they, when they tried to, I'm on the, 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 the little uh, table thingy and they're trying to get more blood. I saw them doctors look at each other like, what do we do? Sure, I'm going to sleep. Whatever happens, happens. I was so tired. Like, if I don't come back out of this, it is what it is. I'm 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 kind of over it at this point. Um, mm. So, yeah. So the next, do, we, do you want me to go through all of the points and then you go through your points? It's up to you. Okay, let's do it like that so I can make this quick. Um, I don't want to make it quick. I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to rush through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like this episode means a lot to me. Okay. You know, so I don't want to rush through this episode, but go ahead. Okay. Just take your time, friend. <laughs> we chilling. We chilling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so 
that is directing me, boy. Having to make the decision to do that, that was a lot. Um, let me just read my notes so I, I don't get ahead of myself. I remember you said something um, along the lines yeah. of like grieving children that you didn't necessarily even want. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't saying it in the wrong space. So yeah, grieving, um, it, it's weird to go through a, a grieving process over children that I didn't want. I didn't have the desire to have children. I think at one point I did want to have kids. Um, you know, dreamt about being a mom and teaching them all the cool things that I'm into. Um, then getting married and realizing he and I didn't need to be having children, so I'm so glad we didn't. Um, and then having these health issues that made it even hard to, you know, have kids. So I kind of made up in my mind, like, kids wasn't something that I wanted to have. Just I just didn't feel like I lived the lifestyle that was conducive of being a good mom. Hmm. Um, because I wanted, be, I wanted the freedom still to pick up and go and do what I wanted to. If I want to work on this project or somebody needs this, I was still in that space. Right. I don't think that um, I would have still been able to do that effectively and been the parent that I wanted to be. Right. Um, and so, yeah, not every, I feel like too many people put pressure on women to have, like, because you're a woman, it should be in you to have a kid because this is what you're meant for. Right. It's like not every woman needs to be having children. Facts. Let's not put that pressure on a lot you know, of these all men women. don't either, child. Yeah, child. Um, follow your heart, man. Yeah. So, but it it still hurt me. It, it's a difference when you make it up in your mind. Maybe if you meet someone later, or you might change your mind later on. But to have that choice taken away from you, yeah, that hurt me a lot more than I ex expected it to. So I had a good old boohoo cry. Wow. Before they like will be back. I remember, you know, my mom was just there in the room with me and I, I cried like for the yeah. first time over the decision I had to make. Um, yeah, man, because I, I don't necessarily want to carry. Mm -hmm. I want kids. I want more kids. I have to. Yeah. I want more. But like I always used to say, I ain't trying to look like Missy Elliott in these sweatsuits. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I ain't trying to look like Why Mr. Would you say that? I'm not trying to look like Mr. Mina, man. Oh I'm my not, gosh. I'm not trying to look like Mr. Mina in no tracksuit, pregnant. A whole a whole pregnant stud in tracksuits. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool, yo. But I can't imagine what it would feel like if I was under that same, you know, under those same circumstances mm -hmm. and I'm now in a position where I can't. Yeah. Even if I want to. Right. I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, dealing with all of that, fresh off of divorce, not even like, you know, I think he left in, he left that December and so that following year is when my health, it, it really took a turn for the worse. And I ended up having to have the surgery in March. So dealing with all of that at the same time. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. God, man. But you made it through. I did, by the grace of God. <laughs> and friends and family, because it's too much. It's almost too much to deal with. Um any one of those things separately, but like right on top of each other. Yeah. It's a lot. <sighs> Jesus. So, um, yeah. So what behaviors or patterns arose from these things? Uh, so I listed, I'm going to go by how I spoke about the issues and then. <laughs> I did them. not. You sent me those notes. I ain't, I ain't take no deck on notes. It's okay. You're going to speak from the heart. <laughs> um, I gotta write it down. I'm gonna forget. Hit my head that. a lot as a child. Um, I that. So it caused me. So the first factor I listed was my relationship. So um, the patterns that arose from this is it caused me to doubt my ability to make decisions. 
So I second guessed everything. Um, you know, I really don't want to like rehash the things, but yeah, it, it it greatly impacted how comfortable I was making decisions for myself. Even with what I wanted to to wear, I was just like unsure of everything. I really didn't have confidence that this was a good choice. Right. This is, you know, I'm doing the right thing. Um, so in the second part, um, I said that, you know, my mental and physical health slipped. Um, well, I just spoke about the, the grieving of the, the kids. So, um, and dealing with the fibroids and the endometriosis, all of those were, you know, factors from my, uh, my physical health. Um, I have a fourth point, which is like a lot of what I've learned through therapy. So I wrote those things down. Um, so I have an attachment injury is, is what she calls it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and she says it's easy to detach. It's easy for me to detach when there's strife. That's probably why I go get in bed. Hmm. Like when you call me that one Friday and I... I I think I had my phone like on do not disturb or something, so I missed it. But it was early in the evening on a Friday. It was like six something, and I'm in the bed already. And you you was like, "What are you doing in the bed on a on a Friday?" Yeah. Do you then when I was I was like, "I'm just not feeling good." And you immediately was like, "I hope that you get to feel better about what we've done." It's like you knew that I was in the bed because of you know everything that happened. So yeah. yeah, when when things get hard, I go get in the bed. So if you hear me saying I, I want to go get into bed, like that's because I'm feeling uneasy in the inside. That's something I feel that. I do. Yeah, I feel that. Um, and I have a fear of detaching from things that don't serve me well, which is probably why, even though the relationship wasn't good, we spoke about it. It was a good thing. I'm still almost like blaming myself, um, like trying to take fault for something that's not my fault. Um, and she said, I have negative beliefs about myself that were developed because of this, and they are strong. They are very strong. <laughs> it's like he man can't even break that jaw. It's very, it's very strong, and, you know, but... What I will say is I've seen a lot of progress in you yeah. from just by the moment that we started this to now. Mm. You know what I mean? Like your, your confidence is slowly but surely coming into the fold. Like, yeah. And I think, I think that each milestone needs to be celebrated. Mm. You know what I mean? Each month that I see you, I see you blossom a little bit more. Like if I could, if I could like, imagine you as like a flower each little petal starts to open up you know what i mean like so you're definitely blooming into a, a new and better version of yourself and i just think that you, i just want you to sit in that mm -hmm. sit in that oh yeah man so that's it for the first part um of losing myself so you go dang why you got just say it's okay. Now you go. Your turn. All right. So you sent me the notes. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily write anything down. I always speak from the heart. I always speak from the from the from the tip top pause. But <laughs> I was about to say pause. <laughs> I wanted to say something because with this being the last part of our grief series, I have messages that get sent to my phone. And the message that got sent to me, this is what I said I want to talk to you about. Okay. The message that got sent to my phone was, don't grieve a past that doesn't exist anymore. That is literally my daily message today as wow. we record the last episode of our grief series. Wow. Don't grieve a past that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. And that was like a clear sign from God to let it go. Let it go. Lay it at my feet and let it go. And that's what I'm going to do. We gonna talk. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. That's why I said like this. This is like, why you? <laughs> why are your eyes open like that? We gonna talk. Why you just do that? Is it? 
we gonna talk. Yeah, man. But that you know, this is this is it. I'm I'm tired of carrying this baggage. I'm tired of is is heavy. And each episode that we've had, each part of this series that we've had, I've laid it at God's feet. Yeah. And I've let it go. Mm. Um, last month's episode was very hard for me too. I physically got a little ill, like, but I had to get back in that mode. I'm letting it go. I'm laying it at, at God's feet. And the responses that I got from it, they were also helpful because it's like, this is helping people. This is what a lot of people need. They need to not only, it's not even that they can resonate exactly with our experiences, but people need to see vulnerability. People need to see people. Like we have all these like content creators, curators, this, that, and a third. They're not real. They're not giving people the real deal. They're, they're just not. Yeah. And they're showing a made up version of themselves. They're showing themselves in the lighting that they want to be seen in. And the lighting that I'm being seen in right now is the lighting that God is shining on me. And that's the only lighting I'm willing to, to show. Yeah. Whatever God wants me to show, I'm going to show. If it's a dark side of myself, if it's a, if it's a light side of myself, I'm going to show it all. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so this, this episode means a lot to me because not only is it the ending of something, it's a, it's a beginning of something greater. Yes. I'm able to walk away and feel renewed. And in the midst of that, I'm also able to help others, you know? And yeah, I wanted to share that John with you because I felt like that was like super powerful. Like, wow, like don't grieve a past that doesn't exist anymore. It's yeah, done. That's crazy. That's crazy. That on the day of all days, that that's my message. <laughs> yeah. That's nothing but God. Right. That's nothing but God. And I, and I, often say like are we truly are we truly a believer of god if we constantly are faced with our fears but we crumble in the face of it like is that really being like a true believer that everything's going to be okay like if you if god is saying listen like give it to me i take it all nothing's too powerful for me yeah are we true believers if we if we don't do that mm -hmm. so that's where i'm at with it um, another thing, the way I honestly wanted to start this off with is loss of self is also kind of challenging because many of us never come into who we are. Like, who are you really outside of what someone has always told you you are? Yeah. The moment you've come into cognition, you were given a name. The moment you came into cognition, you were given a gender. The moment you came into cognition, you were given a race, a nationality. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you were given things. So who are you really to even lose yourself? Do you even know yourself to even lose yourself? Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's the real grief process that I went through, not realizing that I didn't even know myself. Mm -hmm. And then soul searching and finding myself and finding out who I am to the point where now I'm not willing to be defined by anything you know what i mean like yeah. i'm standing on 10 for like myself mm -hmm. like coming into who i am and i think that life experiences definitely make you lose parts of yourself like how you said like a relationship um health and wellness and things like that so for me i think the first time that i could think of losing myself would be when I was a child. Mm. It started young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, being defined as things that I innately didn't feel that I was myself. Right. But being told that that's what I am. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then you start to wear that as a badge. Mm. Or you think, well, if everybody thinks this of me, I might as well be it. Mm. If people think I'm a bad person, then I might as well be bad. Or a bad kid. I might as well be bad. I might as well be rebellious. Yeah. You know, or, you know, you think I'm selfish, then I might as well be stingy. And I think that's the first moment that I can 
remember that people used to say things about me that I didn't find true within myself. And all that did was build up a wall. Like I started to, I just remember like little Courtney just building up a, a little wall. And then that wall just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And that shit ended up bigger than the wall of China. You know what I mean? Mm. And then it's like coming out as queer. You know, even what is that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm being told that that's what I am. Mm. Even that's another label that I have to wear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like we have to have these labels to define who we are, to make people feel better about themselves. Even queer people. Mm. If you find out that I'm queer, then maybe you could find some commonality mm, in me. Mm. But like, I ain't none of that shit. Yeah. Like, I'm me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when we leave here, are we leaving here as queer? Are we leaving here as woman? Are we leaving here as men? Like, what are we leaving here as? Yeah. Because we go into a place where none of that even matters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, I remember distinctively, like, in high school when... Now, mind you, I knew what I was since a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I knew that I was different, mm -hmm. you know? And I think I made, like, a conscious decision to live in it and stand in it when I was a young adult. And that came with a lot of backlash from family, from people I thought were friends. You know what I mean? Like, from community, walking outside, feeling unsafe, you know? around black men and women, not sure what people would say about me, mm. how people would handle me, mm -hmm. would I be okay, would I be safe? You start to lose yourself. You start to build up more of a wall. Mm -hmm. Now you're a little more unapproachable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you feel like you have to, with me being a mask appearing woman, I feel like I have to now act a certain way. I used to say it like, a lot of us younger mask appearing women, were like when we were younger, we didn't have any role models. They was too busy in the closet. Yeah. Shout out Queen Latifah. <laughs> <laughs> but she would have been a good role model back then. Because I was watching Set It Off like... I was about to say, it's Cleo. I wanted her to set it off. <laughs> I wanted her to set it off. She's setting it off now, but it's like... Yeah. I'm grown now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we didn't have role models to... It wasn't cool to be queer. Like, it wasn't cool to come out. It wasn't cool to be yourself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't cool to live in your truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it just wasn't cool. It, it, it wasn't something that was viewed as, like, acceptable. Yeah. And you end up taking on toxic masculinity traits. Like, you, you end up taking on toxic masculinity. Mm. And then you get into a queer relationship with gender roles. It's the weirdest thing. But that's... You know, like if I'm mask appearing and I'm with a feminine woman, then it's like mm, I, I take on the responsibility of the the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like now it's like you're losing even more of yourself because now you feel uncomfortable to be to step foot in your womanhood. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm talking about when I'm when I'm young. Yeah. Like I felt uncomfortable to be a woman mm. and what that meant. But I knew that I enjoyed being a woman. Yeah. But I didn't know if I was going to be accepted. Mm. So I had to act a certain way, mm -hmm. you know? And that's another thing of, like, losing myself. Then it's like you get into these relationships, and each failed relationship, you lose more and more and more of yourself. But I didn't, I didn't really lose a lot of myself until I got married. I realized, man, like, I was on a path of not being... Anything remotely myself when I was in that relationship. Like, yeah. the trajectory I was on was to become a shell. And getting out of that and being able to freaking breathe, no longer being, being around people that I did not align with at all, morally, at all, I had to get out of that relationship. I think out of all of these things that I just stated, that is the most damaging thing of myself, of my personhood, was that marriage. Wow. And leaving it was the best decision that I've ever made for myself. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Like, I was about to be all... 
Y'all would have saw my black ass on a Hallmark card. That that was. I was gonna be home goods, Courtney. Yes. <laughs> now nah, you couldn't have. But that's what I was about to become. Like yeah. that's not me. Yeah. Like that's not me. Even the way that the parenting styles, like the way that I view myself as a parent today, like what kind of parent would I be? Mm -hmm. Like what kind of parent am I? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I even lost that. Like I was married to a person who took motherhood from me. And I didn't I didn't talk about this in the last episode, and I kind of didn't necessarily want to because that wasn't the relationship that I cared about in the last episode. But when, when I'm talking about losing myself, right. I lost motherhood. Yeah. I lost the opportunity to be a mother. You know what I mean? Like from the, from conception to now mm -hmm. finding out my wife is pregnant and they're not happy. And it's just a, pregnancy a positive pregnancy test on the sink and it's like no real emotion behind it them being pregnant and not feeling connected to the life that's inside of them and not wanting to engage doing the entire baby shower like all those gifts that you saw in that registry I looked and found all of that myself I did all of that myself like not having like partnership in that yeah and excitement, like the level of excitement, like shout out, shout out to homie Dorian. Like I see how excited homie is. Yeah. Like I see how he is with his partner, like how they are together. Like mm -hmm. it's like a team. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I yearned for that and I grieved that. Like that was taken from me. Yeah. Being a primary caregiver when they, when they came. Right. But never being viewed as mother, being viewed as caregiver. Yeah. And I talked about it last night, and this is why I'm talking about it today, because I'm, if I'm laying it all at God's feet, I'm laying, it, I'm laying it there. Okay. I was viewed as a caregiver when to, they viewed me as that. I viewed myself as mother-wife, and I was viewed as caregiver. Mm -hmm. You know? And when I, when I left out of that relationship that I didn't necessarily want to, but I'm glad that I did, they offered to pay me to stay to take care of the kids. I got offered to be paid to stay and take care of my children. I don't know if you've ever told me that. I don't think I have. I was viewed as a nanny. I was never viewed as a mother. So now that we're not together and I'm not there and it's out of sight, out of mind, and you've dated other people who you've told me is, are my son's mother and I better respect it, it makes sense because you never viewed me as a mother. But they view me as mom, and I view myself as their mom. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's extremely strong. But I know it, it's it's crazy because like that's another loss of self, right? Because now I'm being viewed as a deadbeat. I'm viewed as a deadbeat. I was called a deadbeat the moment that they got home from the hospital. Yeah. Even though I was doing so much. Right. And that's a loss of self because that's not what I am. And I know from the outside looking in, it might appear that way, but people don't realize how much was taken from me. They don't. They don't get it. They don't. They literally don't get how much was taken from me. And, and what you went through during that time. And what I'm still going yeah. through. The breakdown of my connection with my children. I cannot talk to my children Monday through Thursday because they're not allowed to have electronics during school hours. I am viewed as electronic time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there, you know, and that's a loss of self because it's like on your end, you're grieving children that you never had because, you know, you had to get a hysterectomy. On my end, I'm grieving children I actually have. Mm -hmm. And it's a constant grievance. Yes. Over and over and over and over again. 
you know. Um, so it forced me into a space of redefining myself as mother. What does that look like for me today? Redefining my relationship with my sons. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. When I'm not allowed to have the relationship that I long for, the relationship that I deserve to have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so that's a that's a major loss of self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, for sure. And then the final loss of self would be would take me back to 2020, where prior to all of the loss, I had a clear cut idea of who I was and what I wanted out of life and where I was going in life. And that was taken from me. That was that was taken from me when my good homie Brandon passed away. You know what I mean? Um because that was the person I wanted to do life with. Like that was the person that I wanted to do that type of entrep entrepreneurial like endeavor and journey with. I wanted to do it with them at the time. And just like how we had a whole year planned out, I had a whole year planned out with him. Yeah. And that was that was taken. And a lot of my creativity was tied into that project. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, I really did not know who I was. Like I, I didn't know how to stand on my own two feet. Like I didn't want to create anymore. I didn't feel like taking a picture. Like if I did, the pictures I took were just on the phone. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. y'all used to be like, it's so good. But I didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. Like I just kind of like no longer had an idea of what I wanted out of life itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Interest-wise, creativity-wise. And then it would be this previous relationship that just ended. This person came into my life when I no longer wanted to be married again. Like, I really left my previous marriage feeling like I don't want mm. to be married again. I don't want to have more kids. Like, if this is what... It was so painful that it was just like, if this is what it's like, I don't want it. Yeah. And that person came into my life and they made me realize that I wanted love. Not only did I want that type of love, like I wanted to create something out of love, which I never had. You know what I mean? I didn't have that the first time around. Mm -hmm. But they, they made me feel that way. It took a while. We, we, we fought about it because they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I ended up wanting marriage. I ended up wanting a second go at motherhood. And I wanted it with them, you know? And it's kind of like every time I was close to like proposing, getting to that point with them, something catastrophic happened. Yeah. Like right when I'm there, yep. I'm telling all y'all, I'm telling, I'm making plans. I'm even telling their family like what my plans are. Yeah. So then the embarrassment that comes from the felt relationship in that, and then the grieving of like potentially not having the, the wife that I long to have and the children that I long to have, like that was, that reality was snatched from me when that relationship ended. Mm. And I'm not saying that it lives and dies with them today. I'm not saying that, but that's what I wanted. That's what I had longed for. And it's just loss of self. And then the, I keep saying the final, but the, the major final one would be when I would do the work. After everything was said and done, I'm now in like August of 2023. I went through a bad breakup. September, 2023, ain't getting no better. October, blah, blah, boom, it's moving on. But then, I ended up venturing deeper into spirituality. I ended up getting therapy. I ended up doing the things that I needed to do. I'm I'm still eating better. And that's where I found myself. 
And that's where I found that I was deserving of everything good because I was willing to become everything good. Yeah. So now it's just like a grief, a grief of like, a grievance of like who you thought you were all this time coming to realize that all of it is a lie, an illusion, and you're able to do some soul searching and you realize that none of that was even me to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, this is really who you are. This is really what you are. This is what you are right now and this is what you're about to become. And that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. I ain't go I ain't go through your list at all. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it up. So you talked about um losing yourself. Yeah. You kind of also well there were two sub um genres. Mm -hmm. So what factors contributed to it and then what behaviors or patterns arose from it, but I feel like you you know touched on that. Yeah. Um all of it. The second part is finding ourselves, Word. you know, how we found ourselves. I think you touched on that too. Um, but did you want to expound on anything? <clears throat> Therapy and spirituality saved my life. Yeah. Like, for real, for real. Like, saved my life. I think I kind of, like, touched on it a little bit, how, like, I used to view therapy. Yeah. Because I went to therapy since a kid, on and off. Mm-hmm. And I just never had any serious breakthrough. So I was jaded. And I used to look at people who went to therapy like, that John don't work. Like, it's not real. Mm. It don't work. But one thing that I did this time around was I prayed for my therapist. Wow. I actually prayed for them before I was matched with, with anyone. Mm. And one thing that I wanted my therapist to show up as is a spiritual person someone who is open to spirituality, someone who can help me in tangent with me journeying through spirituality. Yeah. And I was paired with an incredible therapist mm. who I've been able to do a lot of groundbreaking work with. And I remember my first session with them, I said, I'm not about to be here for a long time, but it's going to be soul shattering. Yeah. We're going to do great work together. Um, but my whole thing is, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm in therapy for the rest of my life and I'm not gaining the lessons that need to be gained. Mm. I'm in a space of I need the tools that I need to move forward with my life and yeah. move forward with my journey and my life's purpose. Yeah. So I don't want to just be up in here wasting your time and I don't want you in my face wasting mine. You know what I'm saying? Like I really want to get to the bottom of these things and I want you to push me out the nest. Yeah. Cause I'm definitely gonna fly. Mm. Like that's where I'm at. You know what I mean. So, um, shout out my therapist, and shout out um, my spiritual mentor, who <laughs> is extremely blunt. Be knocking my head off, telling me all about myself. I needed that. Mm. I needed that. Yeah. The spiritual person I was going to before that was introduced to me by a friend. I appreciate them too because they introduced me to spirituality, but I realized that I got to kind of take a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thankful that I was, um, I'm thankful that I was confident enough to step out yeah. on my own. Yeah. And I tell people like, when you're about to get into spirituality and you're meeting people that are spiritual, it's something that you have to like divinate on. Like you have to like pray on that. Ask for your ancestors, your spirit, God's God, to have people fall into alignment with you. Like, don't just, oh, my friend is going to this person, I'm going to go to this. Nah, like, allow that to come into your own life personally. And that's what happened. Like, I I organically found both. Yeah. And um, I've done extremely great work with both of them, and I appreciate them. So, shout out Deja and Katalia. Or um, so I want to end off on, you know, my portion of how I found myself. Word. Um, so the first point is what steps did I take, uh, to find myself again? 
therapy, just like you were talking about. Yeah. Um, therapy has helped me just realize so much about myself um, that I would have never been able to, you know, put into words and just taught me like what the root of, you know, the issues are and things like that. And um, just giving me some like really great tools that I can just pull out of my pocket when I need it to. Because, you know, there's no guarantee that these these feelings and these things won't arise again. But, like, I don't have to let it break me down as I did, you know, in the past. Now I have things that I can pull out and remember and hold on to. And those things stop me from falling down, you know, into despair sometimes. The abyss. <laughs> God. Um, so that was that. Um, r- what routines or habits um, have we developed to sustain us? So I have three. Um, so the first one is um, I text my mom every morning, like when I'm going into the office, because I ride down her street. You know where my mom lives. Yeah. So literally, like, I'm at that light right on where she lives at. And it felt like weird that I'm just passing and I'm so close to her and I'm not even like speaking. So I started like just sending her, I sent her like a little, like <laughs> a little hand wave. But also like I do that because I want her to know like I'm okay. Like I made it out of bed. Because sometimes when I have to go into the office, it's not always easy for me to push myself to like get out of bed, especially if I'm. You never know with depression, like, you know, it, it could just be on you. And the voice is just like, just stay right here. Just don't even get up. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm I'm like, nah, I got to get up so I can text my mom. You know what I'm saying? On Even on the days when I, mm-hmm. when I don't feel like it, it's like, nah, I got to send that text. Word. I got to let her know because she... Sometimes, like, she would, like, I guess, like, check my location. You know what I'm saying? If she sees that I'm in the house still, then she's going to worry. Like, what's, what's, why are you still home? You know what I mean? I don't want her to worry about me. Like, sometimes, yeah. you know, you, you have a bad mental health day. And like I said, I'll be in the bed. Um, so it helps me to push past that because I know I got to send her that text. I got to get up so I can send my mom the text. You know what I'm saying? My depression, though, I got to pay these bills. <laughs> <laughs> or or me and you gonna be on the street, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> Got time to play. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's that. And then another thing that I do, I kind of like buy what I want, do what I want. Um. I know earlier I spoke about you know where I would doubt the decisions that I would make. Now it's like I don't. I have the freedom to to do what I want, to buy what I want, especially if I want to wear something. I don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks about it. Right. Sometimes you're going to take an L on some things, especially when I'm trying out new things, new styles that I want to, you know, play around with. You don't know how something is going to look until you try. But I don't have the pressure of dressing for anybody but me. I don't worry about what anybody is going to think about what I'm wearing. Do I think that it looks good? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just like really stepping into that and doing things like that for myself um, has been another thing that I do. And the third is uh, forgiving myself. Forgiveness is something that I didn't realize could it was something that I could give myself. Mm. Because it was, to me... When you ask for forgiveness, you're asking for forgiveness from someone you offended, right? right? The person has to grant it for you. But I was struggling with so much guilt when my grandmother passed. How's she going to give me forgiveness if she's not here no more? Right. My grandfather's gone. He's not here. I didn't get to go, you know. So I really struggled with the concept of it's okay for me to forgive myself that I wasn't able to, to see them before they left about it here. Um, even with my relationship, which, I, which I'm still working on, like he's not here to, you know, offer me forgiveness on, you know, whatever. But just learning that I have the power to forgive myself has been one of the biggest lessons. Wow. Um. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. That's crazy because that's definitely how I felt mm. this like in 2023. Mm -hmm. Like I was so ashamed and like hurt. Yeah. Like how everything transpired like from 2020 until 2023. Mm -hmm. I I was like extremely embarrassed on how I interacted and and engaged with certain people. Yeah. And self forgiveness. Yeah. Definitely helped me out so much. Mm -hmm. Because it's not even that these people aren't here to forgive you. A lot of people are just not going to forgive you. Right. Or they'll say that they forgive you, but then they, if they have a chance to throw it back in your face, they will. Right. And I think that when you forgive yourself, it's like you really free yourself of all of your transgressions. Mm -hmm. And number one, it makes you cognizant of your transgressions, accountable for them. And then you're forgiving yourself for doing it in the first place. Yeah. And in, in hopes that you don't do it again. Right. So that's dope, man, because I, I didn't, I should have maybe wrote some notes because that probably would have been on my list too. Mm. Forgiveness of self. Yeah. That helped me out so much. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's so necessary. You know what I'm saying? We'd be it walking is. around with a, um, a lot of baggage and, things that we don't need to carry anymore. And like you said, sometimes the people just aren't going to forgive you. Um, but do you forgive yourself? Are you still that same person? Especially if you know that you've done the work to change, not letting anybody hold you to who you used to be right. and snatching that back and marching forward as your, your new self, please. And that level of, that level of strength that comes from that, mm -hmm. It's like, I don't care what you think I am yeah, or what you define me as based on your, per, your own perception or maybe a perception I gave you, mm -hmm. right? That's not me. Yeah. And I don't want to live there anymore. Right. And I'm not going to allow you, me, or anyone else put me back in that old perception. Right. Yeah. It's like. That's, I'm not carrying that cross no more. You know now, I'm mind you, I'm not talking about the people that be gaslighting and the people who be deflecting. Right. Talking about brand new me, new year, new me, and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about people who are out here truly doing effective work, mm. literally breaking themselves down to build themselves back better. Yeah. I'm talking about those people. Yeah. Don't allow people to try to continue to define you based on what you used to do. Mm -hmm. For sure. Especially when you know you've done the work. Especially when you know you've done the work. And for anyone who's doing that, you don't really care mm -hmm. about the people that you're you're approaching. Yeah. If that's what you're doing. Right. I'm trying to show you that I have done the effective work and I am not an, the same person that I used to be. I'm sorry for however I showed up then. I'm trying to show up now. And if you won't let me, I can't, I can't, I can't carry that cross. I'm not even trying to show people. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to show people a damn thing. Yeah. This is what I'm showing myself. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it, it may sound selfish, but it has to start with self. You have to start with yourself. Yeah. This is what I'm showing myself. This is how I'm showing up for myself. And I'm going to allow it to spread out and touch others. Yeah. But I don't care what people think of me anymore. Like I'm not holding myself to anyone else's standards anymore. Courtney doesn't dwell there anymore. Like I'm so much bigger than that. Yeah. It's like you're a prisoner to other people's perception. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't want that. So like, I just know that if I'm engaging with people who continue to bring up old transgressions that I know that I've elevated from yeah. because I have done effective work, mm -hmm. you don't need to be in my life. Perhaps. You don't need to be in my life. Simple as that. Simple as that. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want to keep talking about old stuff. Like, and I understand that like it may have hurt or it may have disappointed, but it's now time for you to then do effective work to free yourself from that. Yeah. You know? Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, and the last part, uh, what have we learned about ourselves? What have I learned about myself? So I got two things. Mm -hmm. And um, that I have the ability to make great choices. 
and the ability to follow through with them. It's like a, a recurring theme. Yeah. You know what I mean? Throughout this whole thing. But I have eventually come to, you know, that point where I know that I can make good choices. Nice. And can execute them. Um, and the last part, I'm going to read it. Um, I can look back on my past self more objectively and give myself grace where I wasn't um, before. So as time passes, you know, and we grow, our perspectives change. Um, so my past self is all also shaping my current self. And the things I used to allow, I no longer will. And I can stand firm in my boundaries. Um, it might take me a long time to set them, but when I do, I stick with them. That's beautiful. Yeah. I really was out here with no boundaries. I wasn't, I didn't have any boundaries and I wasn't respecting anyone else's. It mm -hmm. kind of felt like a, like an attack. Yeah. When a person would say boundary, I'm like, boundary? <laughs> like, what the hell is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I look at all the OG black people that's in my life, they, they be feeling attacked. Mm -hmm. Boundaries? Yeah. Oh, I got your boundary. No, you don't. You don't have my boundary, so I got to dip off. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's scary. I didn't have I didn't have healthy standards for myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have healthy boundaries for myself. Yeah. I didn't have self self-respect and I didn't respect. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to see how your past self can help transform your current self and future self, that is real. Yeah. That is real because mm -hmm. I'm forever transforming and growing from my past self. Yeah. Yeah, man. Cool in real life also helped me mm. find myself again. For sure. It helped me get back in my creative bag mm -hmm. and, you know, put my best foot forward yeah. in that regard. Yeah. Same. Get out the house more. We were just telling Mochi today how, like, working with him. For the past what three months now mm -hmm. has like helped me find my confidence like now it's like I want to be seen mm. like I want pictures taken of me yeah y'all ain't about to be pulling from the high school yearbook <laughs> yeah at the funeral that's the picture that's up there because ain't no other pictures yeah <laughs> you know what I mean mm -hmm. like don't even look like that anymore. I don't even look like that no more and I'm not that's not you know but just the amount of confidence that I have now. I'm just so thankful, man. I'm thankful. Man. Shout out to us. Shout out. We did it, dog. We did it. We doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for the next episode. What are we doing next episode? Just wrapping up the year. I was about to say, the wrap up? The wrap up going to be dope. <laughs> Woo! We made it. So how do you feel after the, after this one? A lot better. Good. I think, um, you know, going into it, I, th I think I still had some residual feelings. Yeah. There's a lot more I was going to say, um, you know, but just growing every day and learning, like, some things aren't necessary. Um, and I just didn't feel that it was necessary to go back to a certain point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I didn't. And I feel good about it. We always on an opposite spectrum of that. Because I felt like it was, I needed to go back to a certain I respect point. yours. Like, <laughs> I respect that. And I, I promise, like, this is just for the sake of having this grief series. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Loss of self. Like, I, I had to just be a little bit vulnerable on what I actually lost of yeah. myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it would be like, I would I really be doing myself any justice to not really explain all of the self that I felt like I lost. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but I also don't want to be misconstrued as a person who dwells there anymore because I don't dwell there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been able to redefine myself in spaces that are that were once uncomfortable for me. I've been able to not just redefine myself, but thrive in it. 
things that bothered me before, like motherhood, that doesn't bother me today. Yeah. And I know that when I tell my story to people, they don't understand how I don't have these like really like nasty or dark feelings towards it. Yeah. But it's like I'm not a prisoner to that anymore. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, I'm proud of us. This was a great series. I'm glad we did it. Me too. So to the people who wanted us to not talk about anything sad, for the next five episodes, it's all sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to us, yo. Shout out. I love you, dog. Love you, man. I love you, dog. I'm glad we did this. Me and too. yeah, man, this is um episode eight. Eight. Grief 103, loss of self. Yeah. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's I don't really got all. nothing else to say. All right. We're closing it out then. Yo. We ain't. The book club. Just to the people who have been looking, like, I wanted to explain why I don't show the books anymore. It's about the change. I just didn't have the time. Yeah. I didn't have the time. So for the people who were looking for, like, the books and stuff like that, you know. We're reading um, Black Leopard, Red Wolf for the next three months, though. So now it's like instead of a new book each month, it's going to be a new book every three months. That sounds about I, right. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. That sounds doable for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's it. Or That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all? We out. No, we're not. Oh. This is the Cool in Real Life podcast where fashion and purpose align. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you in advance for staying. Now we out. We ain't out. Why not? Follow the Instagram. Okay. Cool underscore underscore IRL. Yo, to the new subscribers, last month we got a lot of subscribers, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you to everyone who's tuned in. Um, I wasn't expecting to, to get those numbers so fast. Not not in two days. Thankful for y'all. Um, so please like, comment, subscribe. Heavy on the like, heavy on the subscribe. Yes. We're trying to build up our channel, our YouTube channel. So um that helps us out a ton. So thank you. Thank you to everyone that supports us thus far. Thank you to everyone who has reached out during this series um, and has told us that we're doing phenomenal work and to keep pushing forward. Um, we appreciate y'all. Seriously. And now we out. Cool.